This is a uh, FM synthesizer that I built uh, a few months back. This design is by uh, Rene Sebelos. Uh, apologize, Rene, if I mispronounced your name. Um, and Rene based this design on the uh, the famous um, Yamaha DX7, which is a sort of an iconic FM synth uh, from the 1980s, and um, very popular then, and is still pretty popular actually. You've probably heard uh, lots of uh, DX7 sounds, and maybe weren't aware of it. So this design is based on the gate array. And um, Rene, uh, he had actually got two copies of the DX7 synth in here. In fact, it's more than a DX7. It's not a copy of the DX7. It's basically based on the DX7 architecture. So you have uh, you know six operators and you know one LFO and all that stuff. Um, and he's put that basic architecture in there times two. And he's added some other features as well to kind of extend it. Um, in a lot of different ways actually, so it's, it's very much a superset of the DX7 and there are two copies of it on this uh, gate array including a full FX section so so the gate array is an Arctic 7, I think that's a Xilinx and um, so you buy this module um, and, and the codec and a couple other parts parts cost is about $100 US, um, I bought my stuff from DigiKey so the other parts here, there's a, uh, a flash memory chip, which is used to store the uh, the patches. I think it stores 128 patches. Uh, Opto isolator, which is for the MIDI input. Um, I, I need another MIDI input. Uh, my keyboard won't pass us SysX messages, and uh, you need SysX messages for, for the editor that I wrote. So I added a second one here. I just wire ORed the two... Um, Opto isolators, which works, but you got to make sure you don't send MIDI on both um, cables at the same time. This is the MIDI output. So not much to it, and you can see on the bottom here, um, really not much wiring either. So Rene did a great job of making this thing uh, easy to build. So Rene provides um, instructions. Uh, he's got a parts list. He's got a schematic. He tells you how to put together and program the gateway, etc. Uh, it's not that difficult to build. Uh, he provides a very basic uh, parameter editor for it. Um, this thing has um, something like 400 parameters you have to edit. And uh, Rene's tool, while it works, it's a little tedious. So uh, I wrote a patch editor or librarian for this uh, XFM2 synth um, and I also wrote a, a DX7 patch to XFM2 patch converter so those two, uh, two tools make this thing much much more usable so uh, let's take a look at that next this is the patch editor that I created for the XFM2 I wrote this uh, editor in a program called Controller, which is kind of a generic um, editor for MIDI synths and devices. So if you want to use this panel, you need to download the panel. It'll be on GitHub, and you'll need to install Controller. So the version you should install is 5.3.201, which is the latest stable release. Stay away from the later releases because um, I had a lot of problems. I wasted a lot of time with those. So. Make sure you stay with that stable release. So what we have here is um, we have two pages. We have an operator page and a global control page. So we'll go through the operators. Um, this block here, this sub block, is um, for the oscillators. So this is uh, pretty much standard DX7 stuff. This is a frequency setting, um, phase, sync, Another one difference here between the XFM2 and the uh, well, actually a big difference between the XFM2 and the DX7 is the um, XFM2 has selectable waveforms. So we have uh, eight waveforms we can select for. We select them with this button, and we actually have two oscillators as well per operator. So we can select different waveforms for each oscillator, and we use this wave ratio to select the ratio uh, between them. 128 is basically one to one. And then we add, <coughs> add them together with 1 plus 2. You can't uh, set the relative um, amplitudes of the two. Just add, add them up. Uh, there's also a feature, which is on the second page here, 
optical wave set and um, beta 2 of, of um, the XFM2 release has this feature where you can load your own custom wave sets and there's up to 256. Um, this parameter is here to set it, select different wave sets. It doesn't work for me. I could never get it working. So, uh, but it's there on the panel anyway. So this block here is uh, where you set up your algorithms and your feedback and output levels. And because this is a stereo synth, you have uh, output. Uh, you can pan things. Uh, the operator output um, right and left. So unlike the DX7, the XFM2 has. Um, basically pretty much any algorithm you want. So the DX7 has 32 fixed algorithms and um, the XFM2 you can basically just set them up. So you can set uh, we started op 6 at the bottom, op 1 at the top, so we can basically say well uh, which, mod which uh, operator is going to modulate the others and then we can have an operator modulate itself and then we can adjust the feedback sort of thing. So, so that's that panel. So this is where our envelope generator is, and this envelope is a six-stage envelope. So we set the levels on the top and the rates on the bottom. So we have um, delay, attack, uh, release, uh, or probably decay one, decay two, release one, and release two rates, and then the levels are set appropriate at the top. So the red one here is uh, the sustain level. So we can, <clears throat> and I added this code, I, I borrowed this code from uh, a TG33 panel and um, this allows you to, it plots the envelope so this makes it a lot easier to see what's going on than just having a bunch of numbers. So that's a, a nice piece of code that I borrowed. There's also a loop feature in the XFM2 so if you, you can loop the envelope from the sustain part to either uh, decay one or from the attack. And when you do that, when you enable that, of course, I'm redrawing that in green. This uh, sets your keyboard rates. So, you know, the X, just like the um, DX7, it has the ability to adjust the operator output as you move up and down the keyboard. So that's what this sub panel does. Uh, I should uh, mention at this point, this panel is, um, I borrowed a lot from, there's a DX7 controller panel. And um, a lot of these graphical elements and quite a bit of the code, actually, I... Uh, borrowed from that panel as well so thanks a lot to those guys for posting their panel publicly so on the second page we have the global controls so these are more or less the controls that affect everything um, I mentioned before there are two synths basically two sort of super DX7s in the XFM2 and this is where you address each one so we have unit numbers so we have synth 1 synth 2 and then all addresses both of them. Now there's also MIDI, MIDI addressing which you have to set up properly uh, when you um, program the XFM2. Basically it's covered in, in Renee's instructions. Uh, performance controls, again read the documentation, allows you to do, um, you know, set up external CC controllers or whatever. So init, if we, if we hit the init button it basically resets the patch, resets the XFM2 to its default state. Now you notice it didn't change the editor, so if we want to sync the editor to the XFM2, we do load program from XFM2. So now if we go back to page 1, you see everything is kind of set to default, so we have only one operator that's turned on. We have some default, default envelopes, and the waveform is just a sine wave. And this one below that, it's program select, so this sends a patch change message to the XFM2. So that will step through the patches that are in the memory bank. So again, when you build it, there's a default uh, set of patches that uh, Rene provides. And uh, I'm not going to go through too many here, but. So above here we have uh, MIDI panic, which just does what it says. MIDI panic if you got stuck notes. Write slot. So this is just an, a um, the number where you select uh, when you're writing a patch slot on the memory on the XFM2. So we can also load a program from a file. So I have some patches here that I've created. So let's try. Uh, oh, it's kind of fun. Oh, this one is pretty cool. 
Jesus. That's a pretty sweet sound, actually. I also uh, wrote a patch converter for the uh, DX7 patches, so I have those here. So these are some of the patches from the uh, <clears throat> the DX7 ROM. So the DX7 had 30, uh, I think it was 32 built-in default patches. So I wrote a patch editor. It's also on GitHub, or a patch converter, which takes um, a patch bank, uh, DX7 patch bank, converts it to XFM2 patches. So here's one that uh, you may recognize. So this is the uh, the base patch. In the DX7. Danger Zone <laughs> by Kenny Loggins. Um, so, and then we can also write program to file. So what that does, it writes the current state of the editor to a file on disk. So I'm not going to do that. but So that's the uh, patch loading, saving to memory sort of stuff. Uh, the rest of this stuff, I think, I'm not going to go through it in detail. It's it's um, uh, pretty much uh, DX7 standard stuff, the LFOs and the modulations, etc. Um, the pitch envelope, I decided just to leave that as numbers because it's quite tricky to convert that to a graphical envelope. Um, the XFM2, as you can see here, is an arpeggiator. It's um, There's some magic here to get this thing working. I haven't quite figured out what it is, but it does work if you get all the settings correctly. Um, there's a sample modifier, we have a bit crusher and a decimator and some filters, chorus flanger, a phaser, uh, amplitude modulator, delay, reverb, and output. So the way um, Rene architected the XFM2, the two units uh, duplicate everything you see here. So all the operators, all these effects are duplicated. The only common point is the reverb and basically the output. So. Um, yeah, you've basically got, uh, it's, it's two DX7s plus FX, so this makes it kind of like a DX1 with uh, a bunch of built-in effects, so it's a very powerful synth. So, um, yeah, so I guess that's about it. Um, again, I'll post this on GitHub. Uh, I'll probably eventually put it on the uh, controller website, but I want to make sure this thing is sort of working with, it's, it's, there's still a, a parameter or two that I haven't, quite figured out what they do and they're not on the panel yet but I think virtually all of them are, are on here so anyway when it gets uh, kind of more towards the final version I will put on the controller website but for now you can get it from from my github you can get the uh, DX7 to XFM2 patch converter on github as well and uh, yeah so hopefully this uh, you have some fun with this thing